guys, we've got one here that wasn't running. So check the capacitor there, the start capacitor, and it was blown. Kicked it on, it didn't run. So went ahead and found the compressor overheated. So using out the uh, cool little tool by Supco there. I'll have a link down below. But you can see it put the perfect pattern of water all the way across the compressor to help cool it down. You know, I'd uh, speed it up a little bit. Condenser was a little bit dirty, so we got that washed out. And then my favorite thing in the world to do, had a lock on there. He didn't have the key. I love my grinder. Something else to kind of help out a little bit, which I've heard good and bad both. Finally, I just went ahead and just put the rain jacket on because that's it was good for a while, but went ahead and just threw the uh, tools underneath the awning here to keep them dry. So, checking our inside evaporator here. This is an interesting contraption here. Basically, we have a fan motor here, and this sucks the cold air from inside here, blows it through the PVC pipe, which has their ice cream mix in there, to the different uh, ice cream machines up front, and it keeps the ice cream uh, mix cold when it goes out, the, out to the uh, machine. And then the return path is right here on another three inch PVC pipe where it comes back. This customer does a really good job of taking care of his equipment. He's been doing it for a long time. So, lots of ice cream mix. Mainly got the ice cream in here and then the mix. Basically, it's pulled out of there through these pumps right here. This is one of the old school methods. So, and it just uh, pumps it through here, on out through the hoses. He's got the Sherbert, vanilla, chocolate and uh, a few other things there, so. Okay, trying to protect my defrost clock there. This is a great day for this crap to happen. It's raining a little crazy and some lightning, which I usually don't get too excited. Here's a tech tip, guys. When you put these things in there, there's a very good chance you're gonna feel the jolt, <laughs> which really sucks, so. What I'll do, since my shoes are insulated, I'll usually just, and it shook, I can't tell if it kicked on. Not good, still not running, so unfortunately, just kind of yank that back out. He may have lost his compressor. Let's see if it feels warm still. I can still feel some heat in there. Let me check my terminals there, make sure they're okay. Yeah, they all seem like they're okay. Let me try it one more time. It shook. You've seen it shake. I don't see my pressure gauge there dropping though. Can't tell if that's the contactor or the relay. I'm gonna put my amp meter on there and see what we got. Yeah, it's not running. All right, so we went ahead and changed the potential relay with a used one I had on my truck because I just wanted to try it before I condemned this compressor. So basically, went ahead and plugged it in again and I heard it sound like it kicked on. The compressor basically didn't move my gauge at all, but I can feel it vibrating and running. It's basically not pumping. So it feels like it's basically just free spinning inside there. So, yeah, this is not a good time to be doing this stuff, but uh, you know, anything for the customer. So, he needs a new compressor. I think uh, it feels like it's been twisted off the. Uh, Basically, the crankshaft busted loose, and it's just free spinning in there because it's it's not moving at all. And the amperage is very very low. Five amps is way high for these little motors. These motors are usually about 0 0.5, 0 0.8 amps. So it uh, it's gonna need a new compressor. So like I said, I just put that relay in there to get him by type thing to kind of try it out and 
that's uh, what we're gonna have to do. I'm gonna get my bigger tin out. So basically, uh, the compressor uh, they have has AB oil in it. So we're going to take the AB oil out and switch it to PoE. Other than that, they've got it. So we're going to go get it, get that changed. As you can see, weather sucks, but hey, it's work. We got work to do. So by all means, we're just going to get her done. We're going to put up our little tent here. That'll uh, keep me dry. It's not a real tall one, but it'll work. So let's go get the compressor. All right, so you guys have talked about what it's like to have to get your parts. So our parts are right here. So we just basically come up and to get them, you place your sign copy there and you pick up your compressor. So, boom. Of course, I just got the Corona on my hand when I touched their pen and touched their paper. So we got the compressor here and get her going. Okay, we got the new one ready to go here. This one came with a fancy box, which we're going to get the stuff out of that. We're going to dump the oil out of this thing and swap it over to PoE oil. So what I'll end up doing is just pulling the uh, suction cap here, dumping it into my clean can here. Use that in a truck for all kinds of different stuff. And then uh, once we know our oil level, I'll pour this into my reclaim bucket. And we'll put some uh, new oil into there to where we were at before, pour it back in, and we're good to go. That's what your oil should look like. How often does it not look like that? That's the paperwork. Technically, this cell holds about 22 ounces. So we got that marked out. Today's date, like I said, 22. The model number is exactly the same. Put that in there and pour it in, but we gotta dump this out, so we'll just refill it. Right up there, it looks like it's about the D area. So we could weigh it with the scale, but that technically ain't the same kind of ounces, fluid ounces versus some other kind of ounces, but hey, it is what it is. This is the easiest way. All right, went ahead and zeroed it out just for curiosity's sake. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in here. Got that other plug out so that it won't have an air vacuum lock. Okay, got the compressor unbrazed, got the heater there undone, filter dryer out. So, just gotta drop the other one in and uh, start brazing her up. Got her marked there, those wires had some numbers, so do a little cheater here. This will be underneath the cover, nobody will see that. And there's that wonderful headmaster like I worked on yesterday. This one is 180. All right, got the uh, feet all in there and the heater hooked back up. I've kept my plugs in there ever since I got that uh, oil changed. And then same thing, I mean the dryer is going to be my last thing I put in there, so we're keeping everything as dry as possible. It uh, has let up quite a bit on the uh, rain, so we're doing pretty good on that. So we just got to hook up our electrical and then gut the uh, box there out. Okay, we got it breezed in, dryer in there, got the vacuum pump running. Gotta do a little cheater method going on there because I still gotta do the power here. So I gotta strip my goodies out of this box here and get them put in there. I got our new start components in there. They even used the nicer brackets. They had a wire tie on there before. They had one defrost late at night for like an hour. Usually we'll do an hour if we're using a beer cooler. So I added uh, half an hour, one during the day, the 45 minutes late at night, and then maybe a 15 minute, which this is timed off defrost, meaning the fans just keep running. Those won't affect anything. I don't want to create no issues, but his clock was off. So if it gets off again, it won't be like nailing it hard right in the middle of the day when they might be busy. I got lucky. It's running. A little go-go juice in there. She was bubbling a minute ago. It's 150-ish. Go ahead and block this off a touch. Let's see if we can get it up to around the 180 ish area and then we'll start tuning it in. Yeah, we'll make sure she stays steady and then we'll calculate the rest in based off our total charge. Go ahead and remove our cardboard here. Cool 
cooler is about 50 degrees. A little bit more, get her solid. Got my calculations here. So we're at four pounds, 11 ounces. Added 15% to that, and we're at 11 additional ounces. So we're gonna go ahead and add 11 extra ounces. That would be five pounds, six ounces. So we'll just go ahead and continue to add. Get her up there to five pounds, six ounces. And this is not a real big receiver on this thing at all. It's kind of a small one. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there close enough. So it puts us with it blocked off again. We're right at 209-ish area. So we'll go ahead and remove it and see how she does and make sure she stays solid. Things are looking pretty good there. We'll give it a minute to stabilize, make sure that uh, that's not something random. We may just have to add a little bit more to it, just to be certain, but it could be the TXV. Yeah, I gave it some time to stabilize, just like I figured. It was just the TXV probably hunting around, just staying happy. So five pounds, seven ounces. I may add just a touch more, but we're going to make sure we mark it there. I wasn't even certain at first what refrigerant. I assume since that's what we always use is 404 for coolers and freezers. And with POE oil, it's probably likely it. So, so far everything looks really good and he should be pretty happy. We're gonna make sure we do a pump down, make sure that it pumps down, make sure the pressure switch is shutting off in the right location. So we gotta make sure all those things are intact. We don't wanna walk away half checking and get bit in the gonads. And just looking things over, we got 27 degree compressor superheat, which is a good thing. Run about a 22 degree of app, about an 83 degree uh, discharge 185. To look at our uh, discharge temperature, let's put that on a minute ago. Kind of curious to see how it looks. I'm sure, it's got a good grip there. Looks pretty moderate. I love it when moisture gets in there. Just put her into a so-called defrost, which I just timed off. That'll make her pump down, see what she shuts off at. Watch her head pressure a little bit too. Close enough for government work. Bring her out of it. This is where the analogs would come in handy. Because that's not going to respond fast enough. 15 is a little low. Made some adjustment on our control there. Basically now we're bringing her on around about 45-ish and she's shutting off where you see it at right now. About 40. So that control only has a range of about a differential of about 58. So can't go too high. Other than that, uh, everything's looking pretty good. Went ahead and heated up my receiver. Came in about the 80% mark, so we're full on our uh, capacity. Our solenoid's right there, which the cooler's not that far away, so it uh, everything's checking out pretty good. So everything looks good, coil's clean, and the uh, superheat's good on the box, so we just gotta check the cooler and it will be all set. He's already got himself a uh, thermometer in here, so everything.